Hey, welcome to Gun Stuff. Today, we're gonna to step out on the range and we're gonna shoot the Vortex Viper. So we've taken this Viper, we've mounted it to our 5.7 Ruger. We're gonna fire a couple rounds with it. We'll do some long range accuracy testing and we're gonna do a little bit of recoil uh, testing on it as well. So what we're gonna start off with is we're gonna start off with our uh, 50 yard targets. We're gonna go out, we're gonna shoot a little bit of 50 and 100 and then we'll go from there. All right, so we're gonna start off with the. Uh, I'm gonna start off with the 50, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna post up on this uh, pole here just to give me a little bit of stability to take out any of the uh, user error or anything like that, my breathing, anything, uh, flinch, trigger squeeze, any of that stuff, just to give the uh, accuracy the best chance on the red dot itself. All right, going to 50. All right, so our 50 yard target down there looks pretty good. Uh, looks like a group about uh, three, four inches. Uh, we'll walk down, we'll take a look at some of the targets here in a minute. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and reach out to the 100 and we'll see where we're at there. Again, uh, we took a little bit of time. We got this thing uh, uh, on the gun. I zeroed it up, made a couple of adjustments, but then uh, we started tinkering around with it. We've been shooting with it a little bit already, so I've made a couple adjustments to it. I'm gonna shoot out the 50 uh, and then I'll make adjustments from there. I'll just use a little Kentucky windage, get on, t get on target, find my hold, and then I'll just try and print a, de a decent sized group with that. All right, going out to 100. All right, so let's go down range and check them out. All right, so here we are at 50 yards. So uh, the, for a 50 yard group, uh, it, it's holding really well. Uh, we're, we're, this has a six MOA dot on it. So, you know, the dot itself is gonna be about this big. And then I have astigmatism. So, and that's one of the things that comes with red dot is I get to see a bit of a starburst. So I don't have a super crisp, crisp clear dot. So that's why I'm trying to take some of the uh, mechanical disadvantages out of it by using the rest or something like that. But still, we can see here that we're posting about a four inch group uh, across here, maybe four and a half inch. Uh, but at, this is at 50 yards. So, you know, shooting this pistol at 50 yards is, is, is uh, this is more than acceptable. This is actually really, really good for uh, a 50 yard group. But the, uh, one of the things that you want to think about when you're zeroing your pistol is that uh, there are a couple different things. People want to talk about different yardages and where do you zero and things like that. And I like to zero my guns as far as I can because you have your red dot sits here and then your, your bore sits here, you know, on your gun. So you have the, dis the distance between the two of where this red dot sits in here and the center bore access is a little high. So as you go back and you shoot, once you line these up to where the the line of sight meets the line of the line of bore and the trajectory of the gun. Once those one, where those two meet is where you is where you zero the gun. Well, the further you zero that out, the the more the longer uh, shot you're going to be able to take. So if I zero this thing at, tw at at 10 yards or 15 yards or something like that, and to where this bullet is coming up and hitting where the red dot is here and the the uh, trajectory comes up and meets it here. Once I go back to 50 yards or 75 yards or something like that, that bullet is still going to continue to travel up. So at 75 yards, I'm going to be hitting high uh, and it could be considerably high. So the longer range that you have to put out uh, to, to zero your red dot, usually the better. Uh, but you can also use that to your advantage depending on you know what kind of uh, competitions you shoot or what you're going to be using this for. So you just want to find the middle ground of what you know you're going to be using it for. But I always like to do mine at longer ranges just, just because I like to shoot a little bit longer. So let's go ahead and walk down and take a look at the 100-yard uh, target. All right, so here we are at the 100-yard target. Uh, when I was shooting 50, I, I could see my groups and I knew that I was hitting uh, low to the left. So as I knew that as we got back to longer distances, it was gonna, the bolt was still gonna be rising, uh, was, was gonna be rising a little bit. So what I did is I ended up uh, using a little Kentucky windage and instead of just aiming center mass and hitting low, uh, low left, I went ahead and aimed up at the upper shoulder. So this was my aiming point and at the uh, at six MOA, MOA dot at 
100 yards, my dot is a, was, was a little bit bigger than my fist. So basically I was holding my dot right about here. And this is the group I turned out. So uh, what we're looking at here is the, uh, you know, this, the, this, just to give you a comparison of what this is, I mean, it's almost the length of the barrel. You know, this, this red dot was able to, to keep this into uh, about a five inch a five inch range here. So, I mean, very, very accurate. And the ability to be able to keep both eyes open uh, with me having astigmatism in my right eye and then having a little bit of the starburst and all the other things going on, when you can open both eyes, sometimes that you know just gives you a little bit of that optical illusion that the target just looks a little bit clearer because your at your at your good eye or your eye that you know can see better, you know, because some different people have different prescriptions and different eyes, uh, that it helps and it assists that other eye. So being able to keep both eyes open is a big advantage when it comes to uh, when things start to get blurry. So if you have near or far far uh, if you're near or far, far sighted, so it's one of those things that that just gives you another advantage. And I'm extremely happy with with this grouping at 100 yards and the fact that it, this is able to really bring that in. Uh, the and the shots that I took, they, of course, they were grounded. They were benched on that pole up there, but. They weren't super slow fire. I wasn't taking a breath in between, redoing. I mean, I got up there, I shot three shots, braced it, braced up a little bit, and so with a little bit more time and and uh, and and working with the scope and, and fine tuning it, I would think that you'd be able to just get a, a nice tight group about like this and just keep it in keep it in the center all day long. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this. We've done our accuracy testing. We've been shooting this for a little while now. Almost everything we've shot so far has turned out just about like this. You know, we're all they're all nice tight groups. They're smaller than average. So when I'm normally shooting my iron sights, I, I would probably be here, 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 all, all around at 100 yards. Don't typically turn out a tight group at 100 yards. I'm just happy to hit still at 100 yards. So uh, very happy with the performance of this. But now what we're going to do is we're going to step back and we're going to do a little recoil testing on the optic. So that's the fun part. So now we're on to the recoil testing uh, phase, and what we're gonna, what we've done, Colt Python. All right. So what we did, we mounted to Colt Python. We, we had a couple pictures of this posted. I uh, took a mount and cut it down to, and modified it and uh, retapped a couple things to to fit this red dot onto here. I've always wanted to make one of these, so since we have this in for testing, no better time than the present. So. Uh, what we have is it it's on its Picatinny mount right here and we're, we're gonna see the we're gonna check out the recoil impulse on this and see how it how it holds up under recoil with this is right now we're starting off at 38 special and we're gonna move up from there all right there it is Got a little happy hoping I'd have an extra round in there. But just to uh, start off low, we're going to work our way up. So so here we are. Now we're shot our three, three eight, uh, 38 special. Now we're up to 357 Magnum. So we're going to test the recoil abilities on, on 357 Magnum. Powerball. All right. So now we're gonna set it up and have some more fun with it. All right, so moving on with our recoil testing uh, and having fun, 357 Powerball on a soda bottle. <laughs> Didn't have to go far to pick this sucker up, but man, look, it blew that sucker all the way back at us. We're at seven yards, uh, we just want to do uh, have a little fun here. So we're gonna shoot, start shooting a couple things. So moving on with our recoil testing of our Viper uh, Red Dot, Taurus Raging Hunter, 44 mag. Yeah, baby. Here we go. Uh, we'll do six, six shots uh, on steel. Here we go. Ah, <laughs> oh man, ooh, that's hot. So this thing is doing extremely well. Uh, all the shots were 
center mass. But the thing is, is what the this uh, 454, I'm mean, sorry, this 44 Magnum is just pushing that steel around. So as I'm hitting the steel, it's just swinging it all over the place. It's just a lot of weight hitting that thing. So uh, we got ahead, hit some steel. Now we're gonna have some more fun, shoot some other stuff. All right, so I apologize. I don't have my assistant here today to help me set up. these up here and get these ready to shoot all right vortex viper recoil testing raging hunter 444 magnum <laughs> uh, this never gets old just got to keep doing it a little bit of a mess to pick up but We'll get to the rest of that later. All right, continuing on with our testing. Uh, with the Viper Red Dot, we're gonna go defense against the melon variety. <laughs> All right. Oh wow, that's just pure liquid in there right now. Just running out of there. Ah. All right, so fun, we gotta do it again. Man, it just disintegrates those. So the the red dot, the Vortex Viper red dot is holding up extremely well, even to this brute of a, of a caliber. Uh, so we're just going to continue. All right, here we are. Got the big boy melons out. This is getting out of hand. Oh my gosh. So, needless to say, cover with melon right now. Oh boy. There you go. It's pretty good. It's a shame we just wasted that whole thing though, because it's, it's warm out here today. But man, did that sucker explode. Holy smokes. It, it came back and just rained on us back there. All right, we had a lot of fun out there testing this uh, Vortex Viper. So we started off with our, with our Vortex. We put it on the 5.7. We did some accuracy testing, found that I could hold a lot better groups with the red dot, both eyes open, uh, shooting at 100 yards, and, and we shot even a little bit further uh, off camera. The, then we moved up to the Colt Python, which is one of my personal weapons. I love to get that thing out and shoot it every time I can. I seen the red dot and I thought it looked great on top of there. So we put that on top of there. We start out with 38 Special uh, for, for recoil uh, testing and held up great. Moved on to 357 Magnum. It held up great. And then we went ahead and broke out the big boy here. So we got a uh, 44 Magnum a raging hunter here and we took this put it on there and we we blew up a lot of stuff so we big thing is is we want to make it a little more interesting we want to have some fun with this and it's still at the same time be able to test the uh test the gun itself so this the viper is vortex's smallest pistol designed red dot now it comes with a picatinny mount but it's all just designed to mount flat to your to your pistol if you have cutouts or anything like that if your pistols allow for red dot but it also comes with a mount if you decide you want to mount it onto something like this or you want to uh, affix it to a gun that doesn't have the uh, the proper um, 
slide mill in place to accept it. So you get a chance to take this and mount it to a lot of different things. Uh, you can mount these even all the way down to your micro PCCs and things like that that you see a lot of people building and that we've had a chance to shoot here on the show as well. So these things work out really great. Uh, so getting into this, the so it comes with this base. It comes with uh, rags. Uh, tools and everything that you need. A T10 torch wrench when you when you get it out of the box comes with uh, the 2030 battery, which is the with 2032 battery, which is the standard uh, for red dots nowadays. Some of them are even getting a little bit smaller and taking a little bit smaller battery. Uh, it comes with a flathead wrench and it comes with a protective cover. Now we don't have that stuff out here with us right now because we're just in the middle of shooting. So, but when you when you when this arrives at your house, this is what you're going to get. So this thing held up really well. Uh, we made all our adjustments and everything here. On the adjustments, you have your elevation and your windage. Uh, everything goes up in one MOA adjustments, and there are no positive clicks here. So what you have to do is you have to loosen the screws. You make your adjustment just by just by the graduated increments here. You just kind of visually see where you're going. You move it to your one MOA or however however you uh, how many ever you need, and then you put your lock screws back down. Uh, one thing on this scope is uh, that I would suggest is you know make sure that you get these things locked back down because on one of them I didn't tighten it down all the way. I thought I had it uh, tightened down, but I didn't have it tightened down all the way. And then I, I fired a shot off during zeroing uh, when we changed it from gun to gun, and it totally changed my zero. So you want to make sure you get that thing locked down uh, on these lock screws nice and tight before you start to move into it. So these things, uh, you, anytime you're going to put a red dot on a pistol, it's going to take a little bit more time and a little more effort into getting getting it zero, just like if you're putting optics on a long gun or anything else. You want to take this thing out, you want to you want to take it out as far as you can and zero it as far as you can, like you say, out to 50 yards or something like that on handguns is, 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 is more than adequate. But the further it is out, the more accurate it's going to be as you go. Just keeping in mind that as you get closer to the target, there's you're going to have that hide over bore issue where if you're willing to take a shot right up close at five yards, you'll, your dot will be on the target, but the bullet will actually strike just a little bit below. That's not much different than what you have with hide over bore with regular iron sights anyways, but just with the optic being mounted on here and being raised above, uh, it's going to add just maybe another quarter inch or so to it. So these uh, Vortex Viper is meant to be uh, co-witnessed with suppressor height sights. So if it does have the slide mill on here, if, if you do have the milling on here so that it mounts down in there, it will uh, co-witness with your suppressor height sights. So these aren't suppressor height sights. This is a this is a hunting handgun, but uh, so it sits just a little bit higher. Out of your elevation, you get 120 minutes of elevation uh, and windage out of all of your adjustments here. This thing comes in at just one ounce. So no matter what gun you're going to put this on, it is not going to you're not going to feel it. You won't be able to tell that this is on the gun. Uh, one of the great things I liked about it on the being on the 5.7 is uh, being able to manipulate this. Once I was shooting the gun, I got to where I was using the, the red dot itself to manipulate the slide and everything. It makes for really almost like a big handle. I've been uh, one of the people that have been reluctant to change over to red dots on pistols just because I like to shoot what I, what I fight with uh, or what I would carry on a daily basis. And uh, a lot of the shooting sports have been opening up new classes for uh, pistol red dots and things like that. So it's one of the things that I'm slowly making that transition. Uh, but that's part of the reason that it, I, I myself haven't really done it. But now that these things are readily available and they can take this abuse, you know, that, that I think they're going to be more uh, modern part of just about every, every firearm platform that comes out. This thing has a 30,000 hour battery life. and. It, it, the MSRP on this is about 350 and the 6 MOA red dot and the multi-coated optics held up great. So this thing is about one, just a little bit short of two inches, 1.8 inches. It's just a little over an inch and a half and it's just just about one inch, just a little over one inch tall. So on this big gun, it looks, it looks like a very diminutive red dot. But on a pistol, uh, Glock, or anything like that that you're going to put it on, it's going to take up a little bit more real estate. But this thing took a beating today. We know we love it, and we hope you do too. See you next time on Gun Stuff.